I am going to commit a sacrilege today. <laughs> this is something odd. Here's the story. I saw a TV show, one of America's Test Kitchen shows, and they did a recipe. It's in their Cook's Country TV show cookbook. I have the recipe here. They did smoked bourbon chicken, and it looked good. And I thought, I've got to try that, but I don't have a barbecue, and I'm not going to do the smoking. I'm just going to roast it in the oven. Uh, it had such a strong soy sauce flavor to it, I could barely taste the chicken. And that's odd. I say that's odd because America's Test Kitchen gets things perfect. They're like the epitome of perfection when it comes to cooking. But I thought, I can do better than this. I've got to do better than this. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm not going to do smoked. I'm going to do roasted bourbon chicken. But I'm going to come up with my own adjustments to their recipe to see if I can make this chicken taste good. So let's make roasted bourbon chicken. I've got a medium saucepan on the stove here. I'm going to bring the heat up onto that to about medium high. This is one cup of bourbon. That's about 240 milliliters. And then one half cup, 120 milliliters of soy sauce. This is where I'm doing something different. They used equal parts soy sauce and bourbon. And then I have one quarter cup or about 50 grams of packed brown sugar. And then I'm going to put in there from my herb garden two sprigs of fresh thyme and a sprig of fresh rosemary. It isn't much of a, an herb garden, it's just ceramic pots outside my home. Okay, and then actually I'm going to put some, ground some black pepper in there, between an eighth and a quarter teaspoon, some freshly ground black pepper. And then I'm going to put some fresh garlic in there. You need about two to four fresh garlic cloves, depending upon how big they are. I've actually got five here because I'm using some very small ones. The last of my garlic. And I'm heating this just to bring it up to a boil. I don't need to cook anything. I just want to make sure that that sugar is all dissolved. I'm turning the heat off under that because this has just come up to the boil. I can tell by the feeling the bottom with the spoon that the sugar is dissolved. That boiling will also bloom those herbs a little bit and give me some more flavor. I'm going to let this cool now. My marinade now has cooled and I'm just going to put a little bit maybe a quarter cup. Set this aside. I'm going to use this for basting. And then I put a Ziploc bag in a bowl to hold it open. And what I have here is four chicken thighs. I'm using chicken thighs because they were on sale at the local grocery store. 79 cents a pound. Why not take advantage of a sale? But you could use drumsticks, chicken breasts, chicken halves if you wanted to. All right, and then the remainder of my marinade here, I'm gonna pour that into the bag with the herbs. And then I'm gonna just seal this up, try to get most of the air out. Seal it. And then I'm going to let this marinate in the refrigerator and I'm going to turn it over every 15 minutes. I'm not going to marinate this chicken for more than one hour. The book says you can go one to 24 hours and also they slit the meat to let some of the marinade flavor get inside. I'm trying to have a light flavor from the marinade. I don't want too strong of a flavor. But every 15 minutes, I'm gonna turn this bag over so that I can flavor that chicken evenly. 
So there is my chicken. As I said, every 15 minutes I turned it over to distribute that mixture, the marinade, so that it would flavor evenly. In the meantime, I have lined a baking pan with foil, easier cleanup, and I heated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 177 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna open my Ziploc bag here and place my chicken thighs in the pan. Okay, so there's my chicken thighs. I can discard that marinade. I'm gonna bake these in the oven to an internal temperature of about 165, 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 74 degrees Celsius. I'll be checking it with a digital thermometer. That's gonna take, I would estimate, 45 minutes to an hour. And while these are baking, every 15 minutes or so, I'm gonna brush the chicken with the marinade that I set aside earlier. This is my first attempt at basting. So there's my chicken. It doesn't look like much of anything yet, but it will. I just want to dab these with this sauce. And after a while, this will crisp up and look like something. Ready to start checking my temperature here. That one is 179. Oh, this looks good. Yeah, this is well above the temperature I need, so this is ready to come out of the oven. Okay, so here it is. And you can see that it's developed a nice kind of browned, almost varnish look to it. I'm going to cover that with foil and let that sit for about 10 minutes while I get my vegetables ready. I loved mixed vegetables. So I have that on my plate, some mashed potatoes and a piece of my roasted bourbon chicken. The last step is to see how good that tastes. I'll cut a little piece of chicken meat for myself with the skin on because I want to taste the marinade See, that's what I'm talking about. You can taste the chicken. There's a very mild flavor with a the marinade there. Oh, that is so good. And the chicken is tender, cooked to perfection. That is wonderful. That is so good. Okay. Excuse me, I'm going to enjoy an early dinner or a late lunch of roasted bourbon chicken. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the homepage or in the recipe archive.